This lesson is for section 5.5. We're going to be solving equations as well as inequalities now. So this is pretty much a new topic here with the inequalities. Um, and we're going to get into that in the second half of the lesson. Um, the equations is just an extension of what we've already been doing with logs and exponents. Now we're going to get into more difficult problems and we're going to have to um, remember that when we solve a log equation we have to make sure that our answers um, are within that restricted domain of all positives. Um, so I'm going to review something really quick before we actually get started and then we're going to go ahead and solve five exponential or log equations um, using inverse operations and this is kind of the big thing that we're going to do today. I don't want to use the definition of a log anymore to solve. I'm going to use strictly inverse operations with you guys um, because I think it's going to be a lot easier for you uh, when you go to solve problems that you haven't seen before. So just to review, again, the basic concept for an exponential function and its inverse logarithmic function, I want to talk about the domain and the range here. The exponential function has a domain of all reals, and your range is only positives, which means now that the logarithmic function, whose range now becomes its domain, right? We look at this, and it's a mapping here. All of the, uh, the range become the inputs for the inverse function here. And notice that your outputs here... Um, are all reals, but your inputs must be positive. Okay, your your inputs have to be positive for a log function. So you may be asking yourself, well, why is that important when we're solving e equations? Well, when we get our answers for the equation, we want to make sure that it makes uh, sense in the original problem here that our inputs here have to be, um, you know, positive. Okay, so we can look at this, and we have a domain actually here that y must be greater than negative two because we're going to set y plus 2 greater than 0. We get y is greater than negative 2. And from here, we have y minus 2 has to be greater than 0. In other words, y has to be greater than 2. This is the more restrictive uh, domain here, because anything that satisfies this has to satisfy here as well. So we're only going to look at this particular domain here. Okay. So our answer, our solution here, should be a value that's larger than 2. So now when we approach problem number one here, we haven't seen anything quite like this yet uh, where you have logs on both sides. What you want to do is collect your logs to one side and then um, isolate that as best you can. So you're going to use the properties of condensing like we did in, in section 5.4 here. So I would move this log to this side and the number over here. And after doing so, I can now condense here and rewrite this equation like so. Now that I can... Um, you know, look at this equation like this. I can exponentiate both sides here. So I'm going to raise everything. I'm going to take this um, to the, uh, use the base of 2 here. So I have 2 to the log base 2 of this expression here equaling 2 to the first power. So 2 to the first power is just 2. And on the left side here, these are going to cancel. And that leaves me with just y plus 2 over y minus 2 equaling 2. And now I have a pretty basic equation here. If I solve by multiplying first by y minus 2 on both sides to get that out of the denominator, I end up with a very basic linear equation. The solution to this linear equation, let's see, 2y minus 4, uh, should end up being y equals 6. And it does satisfy, remember our original domain here was y has to be greater than positive 2. And in fact it is. And this would be our solution. So from here on out, you need to make sure that you're solving with respect to that restricted domain of positive reals as the inputs for uh, your log. All right, now in problem three here, um, this looks kind of confusing, I think. Um, but again, I want you to go back to this use inverse operations. Okay, We can take the log of both sides here, or we can exponentiate both sides here, and it doesn't change the original equation. So what I'm going to do is raise both of these to the base of 10. So... On the right hand side I have 10 to the fourth, and on the left, 10 to the log base 10 is going to cancel out, leaving me with just log base 10 of x. And again, I'm going to exponentiate both sides so that I can get rid of this. Okay, so I have 10 raised on both sides here. This is going to cancel, leaving me with x equals 10 to the 10 to the fourth power. That's a pretty large number here. Okay. All right. Um, I want to just go back here, and, and just in case you're confused, you can always double check this with by using um, you know, our definition of a log here as well. If I use the definition of a log, I have a base of 10. So 10 to this exponent here, 10 to the fourth, has to equal my argument, which is x. 
and that's exactly the same uh, answer that I got here. Okay, so if you need to double check your answers using the definition of a log, go right ahead. Um, but really, using the inverse operations is the best bet for solving any of these problems. Okay, all right. Now in problem three, when we're looking at this, we have two. We have an exponential equation on both sides. Now, if I try to raise this by the natural log, or I'm sorry, the uh, log base three on both sides. This cancels out and leaves me with 2x minus 1 equals log base 3 of 6 to the x power. I'm going to get lost here um, because I'm going to try to raise you know, 3 to this power here and I end up with 3 to the 2x minus 1 equaling 3 to, oh sorry this would cancel, but I end up with 6 to the x which is the original problem here. Okay, So exponentiating or, uh, I'm sorry, when I see um, an exponential equation that I cannot rewrite you know, on both sides, and I see that uh, they have variables in both exponents here, I have to do a different method. So this is kind of a more difficult question here because you're going to have to recognize this when you see it on a quiz or a test. Alright, so the method to solving this, because otherwise you just kind of run through the same loop and you get back to where you started, the, the uh, method for solving this is to take the natural log on both sides. So I'm going to take the natural log on both sides here, and so far you might be thinking, well, that doesn't help us much, but remember, we can use our property, the natural log of x to the b power is the same as b times the natural log of x. So I'm going to pull these exponents out in front. Okay, now that I pulled those out in front, I want you to look at what you have left over here. The natural log of 3 and the natural log of 6, these are just numbers. It's just a real number, it's not a nice looking real number, and it's kind of written strangely, but this is just a real number. So you have, you know, a number times this here, equaling a number times x. Well, this is a very easy linear equation, it just doesn't look easy right now. What I'm going to do is distribute this, and I have 2x times the natural log of 3, minus the natural log of 3, equaling x times the natural log of 6. And again, this is just a number, this is just a number, and this is just a number. I could rewrite this as 2x times 3 minus 1 equals x times 6, and then hopefully you'll see why that why I'm saying it's just an easy linear equation here. Okay? We want to try to collect our x's to one side and move our numbers to the other. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to add this uh, L natural log of 3 to this side and subtract this to the other side. Okay, And after doing so, I'm left with this. All right, now what I want to do is factor out the x, okay? Because this is such a nasty number and we don't know what that exact answer is here or what those exact values are, I'm going to leave them like they are, but I want to factor out the x. So I'm going to take the x out of here and I'm left with 2 times the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 6 equaling the natural log of 3. And now to isolate the x here, I can simply divide out this entire expression to the other side and I have natural log of 3 over 2 times the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 6. And this would be my final answer, solving for x. So I definitely think that this is a pretty tricky problem. Make sure that you come back to this or replay that in case anything didn't quite make sense. There's a lot of simple algebra techniques in here, but it can be hard to see what you're supposed to do when you have all these funky looking numbers like the natural log in there. Okay. Okay, now problem number four is an extension of something that you've already been doing. We've already been finding the x and the y-intercepts for, you know, exponential equations. Um, and in this particular case, it looks really difficult um, to try to solve for the x or the y-intercepts here um, because it's just a little bit, you know, I guess more complex than what you've seen so far. But I'm going to show you a trick that hopefully you do remember from chapter two when we were working with quadratics um, for solving this. So uh, when we find an x-intercept, we want to make sure that the y is 0, and when we find a y-intercept, we want to make sure that the x is 0 and go ahead and solve for the, the opposite. Now, I'm going to do this one first just because it's slightly easier. So to find the y-intercept, I'm going to substitute, substitute in 0 here for uh, the x, and I'm left with this, and 4 times 1, which is 4, minus 1, minus 5, gives me a y-intercept of negative 2. So there's my y-intercept. Now for the x-intercept, and when I set this y value equal to 0, I have something that looks quite, you know, difficult to try to solve for, 
but if you remember a technique that we used in quadratics, we can recognize this as a quadratic equation if we let t equal 5 to the x. So you're seeing that one power here is double the other and you have a uh, constant as well. So now you can just use the technique of substitution here. So if we let t equal 5 to the x, that means now I have 4 times t squared minus t minus 5, and that's a simple quadratic um, equation that can be factored. So this will factor into 4t minus 5 and t plus 1. And then I'm going to solve each of these, and I get t equaling 5 fourths and t equals negative 1. So now I'm going to use substitution again and simply rewrite this as 5 to the x equaling 5 fourths because again t equals 5 to the x and uh, 5 to the x equals negative 1. And now I'm going to go ahead and solve. Now when I solve for this um, on the right hand equation here, I cannot uh, solve this because there are no real numbers that I can plug in for x that will give me an output of negative 1. So there are no real solutions here. So we ignore that part here and we're going to focus on 5 to the x equaling 5 fourths. So what I want to do is take the log of base 5 on both sides and this is going to cancel leaving me with x equals log base 5 of 5 fourths. And there's my um, x intercept here. So log base 5 of 5 fourths comma 0 is my x intercept. Okay, now um, in problem number five, I do have this little hint up here about extraneous solutions, and this is the example problem where I want to show you uh, where one of your solutions will not actually fit the original problem. So you'll get a solution. Over here, we did not get a solution, right? It just came out to be no reals over here. But in this case, we're going to get a solution that ends up not working in our original problem. So I want to talk about the domain here. And our input for this log here, it's just 25. It's already a positive, so I'm just going to focus on this negative x must be greater than 0, which means x has to be less than 0. Okay, my final solution here has to be less than 0. So um, I'm going to go ahead, since I have the logs on both sides here, I'm going to condense it so that I can rewrite this as a single logarithm. Now after doing so, I'm left with this. So just to recap how I found that, I can bring that 2 out here in the front, and because I have this minus, I know I'm dividing this, and I have, oops, this should be 25, sorry about that, 25 to the 3 halves power if I bring that out um, here. All right, now I want to rewrite this a little bit easier for myself. This is going to be log base 5 of x squared, negative x squared is positive x squared. And in the denominator here, if I rewrite 25 as 5 squared and raise that to the 3 halves power, that's the same as 5 to the third power. So I'm going to keep that as 5 to the third power. So that's a little bit cleaner. And now I'm going to take this and exponentiate both sides. So I now have 5 to this log base 5, which is going to cancel here, leaving me, leaving me with x squared over 5 cubed equaling 5 to the negative fifth power. Now I want to rewrite this 5 to the negative fifth power in terms of a positive exponent. So that's just going to um, now come down to the denominator. So I have x squared over 5 to the third equaling 1 over 5 to the fifth. And now to isolate this x squared, I can multiply by 5 thirds, or sorry, not 5 thirds, 5 to the third on both sides. And that leaves me with x squared equaling this, if I simplify, is 1 over 5 squared. Okay, now I want to isolate the x here. And if I take the square root of both sides, I am left with positive or negative 1 fifth. So back to our original um, domain here, our x value must be less than 0. So we can throw out x equals 1 fifth. x must only equal negative 1 fifth. And to explain why that is um, true, if you plug in 1 fifth into here, you have 2 times the log base 5 of negative 1 fifth um, because this is the opposite of x. So this is impossible. There is no number that um, I can, uh, uh, that would satisfy this log because again, our inputs must be positive for a log. Okay, and that's why our only solution here is x equals negative 1 over 5. 
All right, there are several um, you try problems here. There are actually five you try problems um, that I would like you to do. This is really a good measure of whether or not you understood um, what those beginning five problems were. Um, I also made them a little bit trickier, not all of them, but some of them are a little trickier than the ones that I just went through. So uh, please, like I said, try that one. The only question that I don't have similar to is question um, three. So again, make sure you understand that. I'm going to split this up into two and then have you guys do the second half tomorrow night. Um, so you guys can, when you go to your homework, just focus on the, the solving equations and then go back and then the next day um, fill in those other ones for the inequalities. So nice job. I will see you guys in class tomorrow. Make sure you ask any questions.